All right, everybody, let's let's do some quick tutorial on shell provisionals. Um, you know, what are shell provisionals? Shell provisionals are essentially, let me see if I have any laying around here. Yeah, here's the set. Shell provisionals are essentially these um, ultra thin, you know, two, 300 micron thick printed um, snap-on smiles, essentially, that you could bond on permanently, depending on the clearance of the resin. Uh, temporarily to chew a trial smile. Um, they're additive typically, which means they're usually just a smidge bulky, but you could print thinner than you could mill. So let's go through this. It's a really easy thing to do. And I'm just gonna kind of go through it quickly because I'm pressed on time today. Um, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is open up your ExoCAD, in my case, um, PlanCAD Premium, which is Plameca Optimize ExoCAD. So we're going to set the case up. They actually have uh, a, a module called Mockup, and it's specifically designed exactly for this. So um, I usually do default, I'll just call this video Mockup. So typically I do premolar to premolar, depending on the case. So let's go ahead and pick Mockup. <clears throat> we'll 3D print this, um, and that is about it. <clears throat> Minimal thickness is 200 microns. And we'll go all the way through. You can import an opposing um, if you're worried about it. Digital impression. Now let's go ahead and go to the design. So that's basically it. You're gonna have your mock-up, leave the connectors highlighted. You could remove them later but it prompts an extra feature in the software which lets, which lets you hard cut to the, um, the model, essentially, um, to the block out model. So we'll show you that in a minute. So let me, let, let me just find a case that I have. Some, no. I gotta find a case that I have uh, photos for and everything. Yeah. Okay, so um, it's asking me for the upper jaw scan. And uh, posing. That's all, that's all you need. So uh, the first thing you're gonna do is set your model orientation. So you wanna be coming down from kind of this incisal view. The, the, so this is just in the wizard. It just asks you what to do. Now it's saying if you pick digital impression, it's going to prompt you to, to trim up some some nasties um, if you want to, some floaters and things like that. You could come in here and you know you could circle and delete things. But for the purposes of this tutorial, let's just hit next. Many digital impression softwares will over articulate the jaws ever so slightly. ExoCAD does not like that. Here it's saying I have an over articulation of 400 microns. I'm just going to hit don't modify the scan data because I don't care. And that's it. So now we're off to the smile creator. In the smile creator, you're going to load first a retracted image. Um, let me see if I can find them. Um, So the retracted image. <clears throat> we got the electric man over here. Yeah. Might be some noise in the background. I got the AC guy looking at some issues in my dental office. So you load the retracted shot and then you're gonna pin the 3D model to the 2D retracted. And so you're just gonna come in here and click two common points, typically one high, one low. And you're gonna tweak ever so slightly to get everything perfect. Want to make this is important. This is important to get this one absolutely perfect. So you don't want to you don't want to be rushing this step. This takes the most time for me out of like all the all the steps, depending on the case. 
because you have a two-dimensional model and you have a three-dimensional model. And if this step isn't, if they're not perfectly coincident here, then you're not going to be able to really use the data in a meaningful way. So like we're looking for, especially in the front six, you want everything to be perfectly coincident. Um, there we go. So now we're going to load the smile image. And we're going to pin the smile image to the, um, to the retracted. So it, and it's important that the patient doesn't tilt their head between those. So I do the retracted first. And then I just tell them, take out the retractors and smile without moving your head. Typically that works. Sometimes patient, patients need a little bit more coaching. The software tries to pin the retracted to the um, thing automatically. I, I never trust it. So I always go to manual alignment um, and you're gonna drop a ball on some coincident areas here. Again, if you can, one high, one low. And then you're gonna fine tune everything to make sure that you're getting these lined up as best as you can. Okay, so now it's gonna ask you for the lip curve. Do that real quick. Inner pupillary line. Do that real quick. Midline. You see it's got kind of a canted maxilla here. And then what you do is you're gonna go ahead and pick your proportion. I like the 165.50. So first thing I do is kind of slide it over his normal midline and try to figure out what would be kind of good proportion for him. And then I come and put it on the new midline. I like the incisal edge length of tooth number eight, so I'm going to come and drop this bar right down there at the new midline, and then we're going to go to the lip line, which is essentially just lining this up with the lip. Don't spend too much time here. And now we're going to go to our 3D mock-up. Um, I like to pick this Saurus library, and then we basically could go to town here where we could, um, you know, you could rotate things, you could move the teeth. Um, get the proportions the way that you want them, tilt some things down, move some things up. Looking at this to make sure that we're semi in line, he does, we do need to do some selective gingivectomies. Um, within the limitations of realistically moving this midline, I'm going to just err ever so slightly uh, off of the midline by a few millimeters. So remember, it's more perfect to get a parallel midline not canted, but if it's off by two millimeters, nobody's going to notice. Um, so then once I have that, you know, we have this kind of ugly looking, cartoony looking mock-up that this software does. I hate. We're going to now go ahead and fine tune the mock-up. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and go to um, simple placement here. Or you could go to chain mode and lock in your eight and nine. And then from here, because we know we liked eight and nine, we had the midline and the length perfect, right? Of eight and nine that we wanted based off of the smile design. So we just hit those red balls to lock those in. And now we could come in and have a little bit closer of a tooth size relationship that we want. And then I'm gonna go to simple here. And basically now each individual tooth is going to be, here, let me turn off the color, it's a little distracting. Um, each individual tooth is going to be manipulated um, to correlate just a little bit more to what the patient presents with, so it's a little bit more realistic. Um, using the, the controls, uh, shift could expand a tooth, uh, control rotates a tooth, and control shift will grow it in one particular area, like stretch it like that. Um, yeah, and so now we're going to come in here ever so slightly manipulating this. Remember, it's going to look wonky because the patient's actual teeth and where they need to be are very different. Um, but we could always turn on our smile creator, hit our smile design view here, 
and come down and start to see lip line, um, this midline here, and things like that. So once we have that, again, I usually fudge with the canines a lot. Um, if I have a two size discrepancy, I, I really like central dominance a lot. So um, oftentimes I'll make the centrals bigger. Come in here like this a little bit. Um, if you're going to fudge with symmetry, lateral incisors, I'm going to go ahead and do some crown lengthening up here, some simulated crown lengthening. And so once I have that kind of like, like this, I'm going to go ahead now and um, take a look at the smile. Good. And I'm going to go ahead, turn all these things off and hit next. Now, this is when you get to sculpt these. So I'm going to go ahead and now, <clears throat> this is a little difficult of a one because, you know, we have to, we have to have a gingival zenith kind of where this natural tooth is. And I'm going to do clear liners on him anyway. So, um, This is also where you could come up and lengthen a little bit over the gingiva to show what it would look like after clear liners or gingivectomy. How thin can you go? You could go super thin. There we go. I'm gonna hit, so I like that. I'm gonna hit next. Actually, I'm gonna go to adapt. Um, proximal cut the proximal contacts really quick and then I'm going to come down here turn off my upper model freeform add remove and I'm going to turn everything back here pink um, because I don't want it overlaying so anywhere that's white is going to overlay the shell anything that's pink is not going to be present in the shell so I don't want shell material down here. I'll show you what that does in a minute. You're basically decreasing the bulk here. I'm using the add remove tool and holding down shift and just melting that back. It takes like three seconds. Come on. Okay. Good, 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 good. Next. Now we're going to um, create the blockout model. Do a facial path of insertion, like a slight facial like this, because that's the way you deliver the shells. Otherwise, it's going to block out near the, the gingiva and cut your shells uh, thinner or shorter than they should be because it's going to have blockout material there. So facial like almost like a 45 degree or a straight facial. I usually do like this 45 degree insertion path right here. Um, just like that. I don't modify the block out. I don't do anything like that. Uh, connectors, I always go to the plus sign here and get rid of them and hit apply cross-sectional change. And hit next. It's now calculating. Th these should have, for some reason, those little pieces should have been removed. I'll have one more opportunity, I think, to modify this. I'm sorry I'm going so fast. Uh, I have a patient coming in here. Yeah, that, that actually, let me just melt this back a little bit more. I don't think it will keep that. Usually it doesn't keep anything that's pink. Um, so now we go to our um, adapt, and now we have a new option here. It's called adapt design to jaw scan hard cut and it's going to now cut this shell and by the way you could keep pink will remove but you could keep some thinner areas here like this particular case some um, these are actually pretty thick shells but like you don't have to have them this thick so so that's it hit next um, next and there is the final shell product right here um, yes, I might have a floater there, um, and that's probably because I didn't melt back the linguals quite enough, but these will snap right in and fit perfectly. 
Um, the way that I print them is with a raft because if I have areas like this that aren't connected, it still allows me to deliver them. I reline them with Bisacryl um, and then I pop off the supports in the mouth. Uh, they just peel right off or you just do a little ET to zip them and then you let the patient wear them. If you wanted to wear them long term, you could uh, like fetch the teeth and bond them on um, with veneer cement and you could even use a interproximal saw and, and saw through the contact so that they can floss um, after they've been bonded. Um, that is it guys. This is, um, this is super fast. Um, I teach a ton of courses on this where we do like we take, we spend two days on this where we basically do the whole process of how to make these look nice. So um, check out the Mod Institute and um, look at some of our veneer courses, our smile consultation courses, um, 3D printing A to Z, all sorts of cool courses. All right. Hope you all have a, a busy clinical day.